I'm Harriet Vance Ball, Associate Professor of Medicine and Scientist at McMaster University, and I'm delighted to have with me today Dr. Pamela S. Douglas, who is the Ursula Geller Professor of Research in Cardiovascular Diseases at Duke University, and we are here at AHA 2022 to discuss her precise trial. Welcome, Dr. Douglas. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you about this trial, um, which was a prospective randomized trial of the optimal evaluation of cardiac symptomization, in which you tested a risk tool to stratify decision-making around patients who presented with cardiac symptoms. Tell us about the rationale for the work. Absolutely. Well, as you know, uh, new onset stable chest pain is incredibly common. And in the United States alone every year accounts for over 4 million tests. What's, what's worse is that we don't have a validated, prospectively validated strategy to optimize testing, even though guidelines agree that our goal should be to reduce unnecessary testing, improve diagnostic yield, reduce complications and costs of invasive testing, and optimize preventive medical treatment. So we know what we want to accomplish, we just don't know how to get there. Right, so um, who were your patients of interest? Were these ambulatory patients who presented to the emergency department or seen in a cardiac clinic? We wanted to test in stable chest pain patients, so mostly in the clinic, and they were new onset disease. We didn't want people with known coronary disease or who had, you know, had test after test of a workup, uh, but not no answer. Uh, we enrolled actually uh, 2,100 uh, patients like this, stable patients, and randomized them to either a precision strategy or usual testing. So these were people that their physicians felt needed a test, so a stress test, a catheterization, or whatever. In the precision strategy, which of course was the intervention arm, we uh, gave, as you mentioned, a risk tool, so a quantitative risk assessment using the PROMISE minimal risk score, which has been validated both internally and externally uh, of the PROMISE trial, to take the 20% at lowest risk and assign them to deferred testing. And the other 80% to CT coronary angiography with selective FFRCD if they had an intermediate stenosis. Dr. Douglas, tell us about the precise tool that you used uh, in your intervention. Um, what were its performance characteristics in the external validation cohort? The PROMISE minimal risk score was derived from uh, the 4,600 patients in the PROMISE trial who had CT testing, and we modeled those with essentially no risk, 27% who had no calcium, no plaque, no events. And uh, we wanted it to be readily available clinical data, uh, clinical variables, so that you would have the data in the office that you needed to make a decision. Externally, it was validated in Scott Hart and Dan Nycat, a total of over 3,400 uh, patients, with an AUC of 0.76, which is better than either a Framingham risk score or dominant enforcer. Fantastic. And what did you choose as your primary endpoint for this trial? The primary endpoint was a composite of all-cause death, non-fatal MI, and catheterization without obstructive disease. And we chose this composite to give a net clinical effectiveness. We've got the efficacy of the cath without obstructive disease, and we've got the safety of the death and MI. And cath without obstructive disease, a little unusual as an endpoint, but it has been used as an endpoint in trials, and it's associated with better quality of life, fewer complications, and lower costs. So we felt in this low risk population with few hard endpoints, this was a significant metric as to the quality of the test pain evaluation. 
Fantastic. Um, tell us about your trial population. What were their baseline characteristics? The baseline characteristics of our population, uh, we had a mean age of 58 and there were half women. 94% had at least one major cardiac risk factor. And our diamond enforcer pretest probability was 16%, so squarely in an intermediate range, with a pooled cohort equation, a uh, 10 year risk of 8%. A quarter of our patients had typical chest pain. So tell us about your results. <laughs> our primary endpoint, which as you remember was a composite, uh, was strikingly positive supporting the precision strategy with an unadjusted hazard ratio of 0.35 adjusted 0.29, very close. We also as a secondary analysis did a hierarchical win ratio analysis, which favors death and MI over the softer cath endpoint. And this had a similar degree of strong positivity supporting the precision strategy. Okay, and in your primary analysis, um, tell us about the, com uh, the component endpoints rather, you talked about the secondary win ratio, but how about the mm -hmm. component endpoints of death um, versus the um, obstructive uh, coronary disease? So uh, death or M death uh, and non-fatal MI or death or MI were much less common than the cath without obstructive disease. And they weren't significantly different in the two arms. There was a, a trend towards a larger difference of non-fatal MI, but the confidence intervals crossed one. The cath without obstructive disease was uh, much more common, accounted for about half of the precision strategy endpoints and uh, um, most of the usual testing endpoints. So it was 2.6% in precision and 10.2% in the usual testing. So a big reduction in that endpoint. What do you make of the um, hint of increased risk in the intervention group with regards to non-fatal MI? Why do you think that might have been? Well, that, that's a complex issue. You know, as, as you might guess, we uh, looked very hard at that. Uh, a third of our MIs were prior to uh, the, the randomized test, so could not be due to the test intervention. And similarly, um, when we did a per protocol analysis, the difference was much smaller. Um, we did note that the majority of the difference was in type two MIs and periprocedural MIs. And for this reason, we did a post hoc analysis using a SKY definition for a procedural, periprocedural MIs, which again um, removed three. Uh, uh, MIs in the precision group and none in the usual testing group. So again, suggesting somewhat related to protocol adherence, um, uh, the DEMI definition, making it difficult to, I think, make too much of it. Obviously, uh, we're very concerned about safety of the strategy, but we didn't see anything that pointed to a worse outcome related to the trial intervention of CT and FFRCT. I, I should say here, very importantly, there were no deaths and no MIs in the precision strategy patients assigned to deferred testing. So there's absolutely no safety concern at all in, in that group, which is an important point. Sure, and your median follow-up was about um, 12 months, right? It was just under 12 months? Correct. The trial duration was 12 months. Our median follow-up was 11.8. 96% completed the study. And were there any crossovers before you measured your endpoints? Uh, there were some crossovers in that people received uh, either the other test um, at, uh, or in the groups that were uh, supposed to be tested. So a few did not uh, test. But overall, 92% of the population um, received the evaluation strategy to which they were assigned. Right, and were there consistent um, treatment effects across subgroups or did you find any variation? 
there was great consistency across subgroups or just one or two that um, the confidence intervals crossed one, uh, but by and large, everything, age, sex, uh, risk score, and so on, uh, were all uh, in favor of the precision strategy. Sure. I wonder if you could comment on the uptake of lipid lowering or antiplatelet therapies in both groups. Yeah, that was a really interesting finding. Um, we found that uh, at 12 months, there was a substantially significantly more uh, lipid lowering therapy as well as antiplatelet medication uh, uh, compared to the usual testing arm. The magnitude of this increase was similar to what has been reported in other trials like Scott Hart and Promise. And uh, as you'll recall, is felt to be the mechanism of benefit of CT in the in the in the uh, Scott Hart trial, as a sort of a control, there was no difference in antihypertensive medication. So, in in summary, your intervention um, was uh, effective uh, with a big treatment effect in reducing the composite of death, non fatal MI, or um, catheterization without obstructive CAD largely driven by the benefit in that endpoint of cardiac cath without obstructive CAD at one year follow-up. Um, how do you think this is going to change patterns of risk stratification or investigation in patients with stable CAD? Well, I, I, I'm hoping that this provides uh, physicians with two things. One, a randomized trial evidence that you can safely defer testing using a quantitatively determined risk score. And we haven't ever had that. We've had assessments of low risk patients who were tested in trials like Promise and Scott Hart, who did well, but of course their care was informed by the testing that they received. Here we have the prospective validation of that. We're very excited. And in fact, we reduced uh, the amount of testing overall in the precision arm and increased the yield. The tests were more likely to be positive. We also reduced catheterization in the precision arm compared to the usual care arm. The second thing that uh, that is the take-home point is that the use of CTA with selective FFRCT was superior to usual testing, was any stress test of the physician's choice or direct to catheterization. So I think those two points, the safety of a carefully performed deferred testing strategy and the use of CTA as a first test are the real take home messages um, of precise. And how do you put these findings in the context of other investigations in this area? Well, regarding the safety issue and deferred testing, that has never been tested in a randomized prospective trial. In fact, all of our risk scores are based on retrospective data and uh, none of them have been at cut points that have been actually examined prospectively in a randomized way. So that is a, a you know first of its kind. Uh, we have, and regarding the use of CT as a first test, we have uh, numerous observational studies um, some of which I've done, many of which have been done by others, uh, like Advance is a large one platform that suggests that CT with FFRCT is beneficial in reducing catheterizations uh, and enhancing uh, preventive treatment. But this is the first randomized trial evidence that we have comparing it to usual care testing. Any plans to do a cost-effectiveness analysis? Yes, we yeah. Uh, yes, and we think that that's very important. Both the cost effectiveness analysis and a uh, drill down details in the low risk group, the results and the outcomes in the low risk group are planned um, hopefully for ACC, but not in, not in time to include here at, at AHA. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us to go over the results of your important trial and congratulations on your late breaking clinical trial presentation that's just a few days away. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today.